favorite husband, starring Lucille Ball. <laughs> Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers tonight, a rare event is taking place. Liz and George are getting dressed to spend an evening in a nightclub. Oh, I'm so excited, George. It's been ages since we've gone out formal. How come you agreed to go? Oh, and you sent me such lovely flowers. Ah, <laughs> well, honey, it's, it's the least I can do on our anniversary. Anniversary? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, come to think of it, we were married in January. You told me you wanted to go to the nightclub because it was our anniversary. Well, come on, we'll be late. Liz? Well, I didn't say wedding anniversary. Come on, genius, let's have it. Well, it's the anniversary of the last time we went to a nightclub. <laughs> what a dirty trick. Oh, you're not mad now, are you, George? No, I'm always red in the face like this. <laughs> I talked Mr. Atterbury into coming along for our anniversary party. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Give me a kiss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Liz, what am I going to do about you? Get dressed. All right. Oh, my gosh, they sure make these tuxedos out of cheap material. Top of my trousers keeps shrinking. <laughs> You know, it could be the top of your hips are made of cheap material. They keep stretching. <laughs> what do you mean? Look at my stomach. Well, why, I'm just as flat as a... a... Side barrel. <laughs> now, just a second. L- look in the mirror there. Flat as a pancake. Yeah, but how long can you hold your breath like that? <laughs> I'm not holding my breath. All right, let's see how long you can keep your stomach flat like that. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Hello, little stomach. <laughs> All right. So I held my breath. Yeah. But, but but look at me now. I'm just as lean as the day I graduated from college. Oh, honey, let's be honest. Any day now, you're going to have to make that big decision. Big decision? Yes, whether to wear your belt above or below your bay window. <laughs> Oh, Liz, this is too uncomfortable. Can't I wear something else besides a tux? Oh, sure, George. I'll wear my new formal, and you wear a seersucker suit and sneakers. Now, come on, we're late. <laughs> Here come the Coopers now, Rudolph. Hi, I'm Mr. Yes, girl, George boy. Hi, folks. George boy, Liz girl. <laughs> Liz, is it exciting being to the night club? Oh, I'll say. Did you bring the card, George boy? Card? Yes, yes. George and I thought we'd play a little canasta. <laughs> Look, try to enjoy yourselves, will you, fellas? Yeah. Oh, I will. <laughs> I just noticed your dress. It's stunning. Oh, thanks. Your dress is pretty, too. Isn't it fun to go formal? <laughs> yeah, I just love it. I wish we'd do it more often. Oh, George, your tuxedo is simply stunning. <laughs> you look divine. Now, never mind. You know, thank you, Mr. Atterbury. Yours is pretty, too. Yours. <laughs> oh, I do love to wear a tux, don't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> I can't think of a nicer way to choke today. <laughs> Rudolph. Now, listen, fellas. We're here. Have a good time, will you? Yeah, you talked me into it. Hooray. <laughs> I am having a jolly time. <laughs> Yippee. Oh, Lexie, maybe they'll feel better. Oh, waiter. Waiter, I'd like to have a... Hmm. Nice try, Liz. Well, I'll get this next one. Uh, 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 uh. 
I think he was wearing blinders. <laughs> You'll never get a waiter. You should have had sense enough to bring along a box lunch. Who do you want to bet I get this next waiter? The one with the tray? Yes. I'll bet you a dollar. So will I. Okay. Uh, waiter? Waiter? Waiter! <laughs> Did madame scream? We'd like to order, please. Are you busy? This is not my table. I don't care if this is not your table. <laughs> we would like to order right now. Oui, oui, madame. I will take your order. Congratulations, Liz. Well, I guess that's the way to do it. All right, folks, what would you like to eat? In the mouth. Pierre, what is the meaning of this on the floor? Oh, pardon me, why, my capitan. I could not help it. I was frightened. Frightened? It was my fault. I frightened him. <laughs> no, madame, the customer is always right. Pierre, you are fired. What do you mean, fired? It wasn't my fault. <laughs> yelled at me. Shut up. <laughs> now, now, just a minute. We haven't ordered yet. I am sorry, madame. <laughs> this was not his taboo. Ah, your father's mustache. <laughs> You boys feel better now? Oh, that was a scrumptious meal, wasn't it? It was a nice sample. <laughs> oh, how can you enjoy anything with these tables pushed so close together? No, they're not so close together. And your roast duck was very good. I tasted it. I didn't have roast duck. I had steak. Oh, now listen, George. I guess I know what I tasted. It was roast duck, and it was very good. Well, thank the lady at the next table. You were eating off her plate. <laughs> Ah, the tables are close together, eh? <laughs> oh, that's awful. Yeah. Well, they are pretty close, Liz. I got my elbows buttered three times. <laughs> I don't understand it. They crowd these tables together. They left almost three feet between those two tables over there. That's the dance floor. <laughs> We'll have fun dancing. Oh, oh, the music started. Yeah, the music started. <laughs> I don't think they heard us. Uh, they have a wonderful dance band here, don't they, Iris? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is a good place for dancing, all right. Well, George? Huh? Well, Rudolph? Hmm? Uh, pardon, dear? Look, the orchestra's playing. Wouldn't you two like to dance? No, thanks. George always steps on my feet. <laughs> Rudolph, Liz and I mean that we would like to dance. Oh, well, go ahead. George and I will hold the table. <laughs> you now have no broken noses. Would you like to try for two? <laughs> Rudolph, would you like to dance or else? <laughs> well, I would, Iris, but I've got my shoes off and I can't get them back on. My feet are swollen. How about you, Nijinsky? <laughs> well, gee, honey, if it's all the same to you, honey, my feet hurt oh, and I'm... Oh, cut, honey. It's no use, Iris. They'll never dance. We might as well take our shoes off again. Well, I can't find one of mine. Wait a minute. <laughs> Rudolph! No wonder you thought your foot was swollen. You're trying to get it into my shoe. Oh. I don't understand it, Iris. Before you were married, did Miss Satterberry like to dance with you? Oh, you mean twinkle toes? Oh, she couldn't get enough of it. Neither could George. I guess a husband is just a fiancé with sore feet. Oh, look. The fact that we're married has nothing to do with it. Well, I don't know. It's just that ever since we said I do, there are so many things that we don't. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'm just tired. I'm not a good dancer anyway. Oh, never mind. And now, ladies and gentlemen, presenting your master of ceremonies, that funny man, Speedy Krause. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? A funny thing happened to me on my way down to the club. I, I saw a little boy standing on a street corner smoking his cigar. A woman went up to him and said, Little boy, does your mother know you smoke cigars? And he looked at her and said, Lady, does your husband know you speak to strange men? Oh, no. I know you're out there. I can hear you breathing. I got a great audience of smilers tonight. Pardon me, madam. I thought you were Boris Karloff. You know, this act would even be bad on television. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is awful. Now, come on, let's go. No, no, let's stay. It might get better. Well, I'm sure you people didn't come here to see me, so I'm going to get off the stage. See, I told you it'd get better. <laughs> you came here to see our floor show, and we get started with those lovable, gorgeous, cuddlesome bundles of poker tube. The star like Judy. Come on, let's bring him out with a big hand. Oh, well, this is more like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were right, George. It looks awful. Let's go. Yeah, come on, Rudolph. No, 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 no. Let's stay. Yeah, yeah. My, those are cute costumes they don't have on. <laughs> Well, she won't get anywhere at this table. There's nobody here but us wallflowers and the footsore brothers. <laughs> well, hello there. Won't well, one of you great big handsome gentlemen dance with little old me? <laughs> You're wasting your time, sister. These guys wouldn't dance. Well, but... gosh, miss, if you're really in a spot. <laughs> The fun-loving Rover Boy. Uh, anyway, George, she was talking to me. <laughs> she was not. She was, too. Besides, I'm president of the bank. <laughs> well, if you're going to pull rank on me. Well, 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 uh, uh, fellas, I, I think you better talk this over with your wife. Oh, they won't mind if we have a little... Uh, uh, hey, hey, where are they? Oh, they're gone. Oh, God! There they are, going out the door with a dark cloud over their head. Hey, Iris! Few people in Norfolk, England, will ever forget the name of Rice Lemming of Toppenish, Washington. In February of 1953, Airman Third Class Lemming was on duty with the 67th Air Rescue Squadron. The worst storm in more than 250 years tore through the low-lying land along the Thames Estuary and crashed through the seawall at Hanstaten, Norfolk. From where he stood, Airman Lemming could see villagers clambering to rooftops, helplessly trapped as icy waters threatened to engulf them. So fierce was the storm that motor launches were forced to turn back. Lemming was unable to swim, but the sight of those maroon people so close spurred him to risk his own life in order to help them. Putting on a rubber survival suit, he waded into the waters, pushing a lifeboat toward the nearest home. The water was up to his neck as 11 persons sought the safety of the boat. Five more times he repeated the perilous trip, rescuing 27 people in all. For his bravery, Queen Elizabeth presented him with the George Cross, England's second highest medal for valor. This didn't happen in Airman Lemming's hometown. The people he rescued were not his own family or even personal friends. His actions dramatically prove once again the concern of Americans for humanity everywhere. Airman Lemming's deeds should give us all a thought to remember. We are Americans, 
As we go, so goes America. As we return to the Coopers, it's the morning after the big walkout at the nightclub. And we find George and Mr. Atterbury talking it over at the bank. Oh, good morning, Mr. Atterbury. Oh, good morning, George boy. Well, how'd you make out after you got home last night? Oh, fine, fine. Liz forgave me completely. Iris was quite big about it, too. Yeah, Liz apologized for causing a scene. But so did Iris. What did Liz really say, boy? <laughs> I don't know. She wouldn't talk to me. Iris wouldn't talk to me, either. Oh, what are we going to do about it? Well, I... Uh, wait. Yes, Miss Stevens? Mrs. Atterbury and Mrs. Cooper are out here to see you. Ooh. Tell them we're in conference. What they said? Tell them we went to... Rudolph! Florida! <laughs> oh, hello, Lotus Bud. Hi, Liz. Hello, George, dear. Dear? Watch out for a booby trap, boy. <laughs> what caused this uh, sudden change of heart, Liz? We forgive you. You do? Yes. Come on out from under the desk, Rudolph. <laughs> well, I... I you, you mean you just forgive us like, like that? Well, there are conditions. Ah. Uh, huh. <laughs> Here comes the small print in the contract. First, from now on, you're going to take us out dining and dancing at least once a month. Well, all right. But we're awful dancers, aren't we, George? We know you're awful dancers. So we've arranged for you to take dancing lessons. Huh? What? Oh, now listen, Liz. I'm... Quiet, George. It's all settled. Iris, if you think I'm going to take that... That's your big bazoo, Buster. <laughs> Bad, George. I've seen those girls who teach at Arthur Murray's. Is... I heard that, Rudolph. Oh, Buster, why didn't you shut your big bazoo? <laughs> yes, and I thought of that beforehand. You're going to take lessons at Professor Crawford. Crawford? It's a very good dancing school. I went there myself until I was 12 years old. Oh, now, wait just a minute. A kid's school? March, Rudolph. You too, George. Keep going. The professor's waiting. <laughs> Well, here it is, George. Professor Crawford School of the Dance. Mm. We'll be the only kids here in long pants, George. Here. <laughs> now, we could roll our pants up. No, no. I'll tell him they're really knickers, but the drawstring broke. <laughs> Let's go in. Well, good afternoon. Can I help you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to take dancing lessons at uh, Atterbury and Cooper. You're uh, not uh, Professor Crawford, are you? Oh, no. I'm his daughter. Well, uh, don't you teach? Well, yes, but I only teach the baby. Do. get along much better with me than my father. Yeah. <laughs> now, which one of you will be first? I will. I will. Oh, now, just a minute, Mr. Adams. George, I'm still president of the bank. <laughs> yes, sir. Shall we then? <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Atterbury. Hello, Katie. Is Liz home? Oh, hi, Iris. Come on in. Oh, I've just 
and shopping, Liz. I got a new dress to wear dancing when the boys think they're good enough to take us. Oh, I guess we handled them right, Iris. It's so cute the way they're taking these dancing lessons seriously. You know, I think they really want to learn. Well, I've never seen Rudolph so conscientious. George, too. He's gone to every single lesson, and I know he hated every minute of it. Yeah. Rudolph hasn't missed once in six lessons. Six? George has only gone five times. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, but he stayed an hour after school twice. <laughs> oh, pardon me, Iris. Hello? Hello? This is a Crawford dancing school calling. Oh, just a minute. It's a dancing school. Ah, uh, Professor Crawford? No, this must be the secretary. The professor is an old fuddy-duddy. Mm. Uh, yes? I'd like to leave a message for Bright Eyes. Oh, I mean, Mr. Cooper. Yes? <laughs> will, will you tell him and ask him to tell Rudy I won't be able to take them tonight? You mean the professor won't be able to take them tonight? No. I've been giving them their lessons. Oh? Will you give them the message? I certainly will, yes. yes. <laughs> Come on, Iris. We have work to do. What's the matter? That was their dancing teacher, and there's nothing funny about that kid's duddy. <laughs> they should be getting here any minute, Iris. Stay over here where they won't see us when they open the door. I want to see their faces when they find us here instead of their precious teacher. Stand back. Here they come. Hello. <laughs> it's bright eyes. <laughs> Hello. Come here, bright eyes. Hi, Rudy. Oh, God. Shut <laughs> up, boy. There's a landmine ahead. <laughs> George, I want to teach you a new song entitled Bright Eyes, Why Are You Black? <laughs> oh, what are you girls doing here? We're your new dancing teachers. Well, where's uh, um, old Professor Crawford? We gave old Professor Crawford the evening off so he could have her hair done. <laughs> you like our method better anyway. Yeah. You two boys dance together and we'll tell you how you're doing. We're dead. May I have this dance? Delighted. Here we go. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. 